in sunny California. I am having a ball. I ran away from home and decided that I just needed to sew for four days uninterrupted, which will in the end be of your benefit. So it's just been wonderful. It seems like at home I get distracted by about 10,000 different things. And so here we are and I am in a secret location. And I don't even know that John knows where I'm at. Well, he knows, he knows I'm, I'm not mad or anything, but I just needed to get away. And I think we're all kind of getting in that position, you know? So if things go bad today, I can't say, John, help me. We'll just have to suffer through. Um, and speaking of that, I wanna talk about what happened Wednesday. The way it was herky-jerky, that was a YouTube situation. Even John couldn't solve that for us, you guys. So if you're ever in a situation where it's herky-jerky, know that you can just dump, bag, and then go back and watch it on the quiltshow.com, on the playlist, go watch it. And John's pretty sure that when it restreams or whatever, it all kind of condenses together. So, you know, technology is wonderful and technology is also frustrating. We understand that. So I have some questions that you guys have sent to me. And one was, um, Karen wanted to know about pre-washing these hand dyes. It is a non-negotiable. They must be pre-washed. And if it were myself, I would, no, I, no. And if it's you too, separate them into lights and darks and because um, you will be shocked at what comes out. Use yourself a color catcher by Shout or Centhropol. We sell those at the store or Retain. Uh, Centhropol wicks out the color, Retain sets the color. So that's the difference. It's just that Centra Pulse my go-to. I have a jug above my washing machine. And I will keep saying over and over that whenever you place an order at TQS, just throw one of those Centra Pulse in. It's like four or five bucks. I mean, I don't know off the top of my head, but that should always be in your laundry cabinet just for emergencies or whatever. So um, yes, Karen, do that. Also, I got asked about poly uh, thread. Um, I think it might have been Mary, I'm not sure. Forgive me if I screw up your names. Uh, has a new Bernina, and she wants to use polyester in her bobbin, and I concur completely, because guess what? You get a whole lot less lint balls and all that kind of stuff, and um, it just keeps your bobbin case cleaner. I used to use 60 weight poly all the time, and now I've switched to 80 weight. It is strong, it is beautiful, and Quilter Select does have that. We do sell it on the website. But of course, if you have a local local dealer, I would prefer you go to them. So I, well, I can't kind of ran away from home for about four or five days. It's been pretty intense at TQS with all this brassica kit and all that. We've given Kristen the gift of a vacation this next week because she has worked so hard and so your orders will come in they will be processed but then they will be shipped get guy give us some grace time here it was so funny because she had said to me she wanted to take a vacation at the end of july and i'm like going of course you've been working so hard and then here we are like august 4th i'm going oh my gosh we're in august sorry so uh, go Suzanne go <laughs> take a vacation but of course Brandy will be there for customer service and so will her sister Melissa so just just we're gonna get her out <laughs> let her have some time off so uh, the other thing is I screwed up I thought Quilter Select was in Australia it's not I don't know why I thought that but it's not. We'd like to be in Australia. So if you're in Australia and you have, you know, a distributor or something like that, uh, let us know. And there's nothing I would rather do than be in Australia. So uh, Judy just asked, how many times do you have to wash? Yeah, you might have to watch a whole ton of times. Um, and it just keeps coming out and out and out. This is just, it has to do with your water, your water system, and then the system of which it was made in. So I can't say it's gonna be X amount of time, but just be generous with those color catchers, with all of that. So it's worth it, you guys. Hand dyes are worth it. And this, this fabric has such a lovely hand to the whole thing. I am going to talk about, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring back up Becky, okay?
I showed you Becky's quilt on, I think, Wednesday. And I told her how much I loved it and this and that. And then just this morning, I got a, a message from her. And the, she said the pinwheel, bother, the pinwheel on the lower left of the peacock bothers her because of the white background. It, it seems too stark. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a couple things about that. First of all, I think it's no issues. It's great because you've got the white in the upper right-hand corner. Then you go diagonally down to the left-hand side and then diagonally down to the spool. So you've got these blocks that kind of jump out at you, but because your eye is taken over the whole surface, it's not an issue. But let me say, if it really bothered you, and I've done this two or three times in my career, when it was all said and done, I go, oh, I can't live with you. You can applique on top of that. Mm -hmm. You could applique those four corners. And I would prepare it so that it's finished applique. I would use the skinniest little stitch on the face of the earth, like a blanket stitch down to darn near nothing. Um, but you know what, Becky, now that I'm looking at it, leave it alone. It's great. Don't, don't mess with it. But I wanted to talk about that because that is a way to fix something, excuse me, if you screw it up. And um, yeah, I've done it. So let's see what's going on in the forum. Um, this is uh, so-and-so. I don't know your real names, but if your name on the forum is so-and-so, I like you anyways. Um, her, just putting her things up there on the wall with the cave. And I just noticed right now on the left-hand side, you've got that one block with the heart in the middle of it. Bravo. I want to show you something. Where I ran away from home, there's a quilt shop. I have plenty of these, but a girl can't run out of these things here. So <laughs> it's the damage I did, along with some doobianis. Yes, yes, yes. So let's see who else we have here. Okay, I love these because you played with your star bellies. Good for you. Doesn't that make it just that much more interesting? I had a book called Star Bellies, and it was 12-inch blocks with different uh, sampler blocks on the inside of it. It's way out of print, but it was, I don't, I don't even know if it was called Star Bellies. Might have been called Keep Quilting. Maybe it was a class that I taught. Okay, so Sherry put this up, and you guys, if you're not going to the forum, you are missing the boat. And Sherry wanted something blendable, and that's very, very kaif, blendy things like that. And then I noticed, kind of at the top of one of the more recent um, posts, was addressing this quilt, and it was somebody's opinion. And what I loved about that, and I don't know what I thought about the opinion. Sherry, you can take it or leave, leave it, but what I really love is that this is being approached like a classroom where people can um, in the most respectful way say what they think and this and that and you know to use the forum in that way is just an eight. so here's some more I just these just inspire me and I'm telling you I would not be using the colors that I I would not be combining the colors that I'm combining if it were not for that Katie Fowler color wheel. So I'm already kind of working on, oh, before I talk about what's next. So I teach a class and I always tell people, make sure your machine's in working condition. And so I'm here with my little 153 Bernina with my name on it. And it starts rattling like there's no tomorrow. And I'm like going, and I start hitting it. What's the matter with you? And then we got a little tool and we took it apart, and this little piece on the inside was hanging loose. Uh oh, so then we tried to put it together, couldn't figure it out. So I called, I took text a picture to my friend Jennifer, who works at Meisner's, and I, and I said, how much trouble am I right here right now? And she said, well, it will still, it's a pretty important part. She asked the text, she said, it will still sew, but your stitch might be compromised. Well, my stitch is not compromised. That is my 153 Bernina. It is hanging with the program. I will get it reinstalled when I get home. Surprise. Okay. So I have not put my um, um, cave quilt together. 
uh, I kind of my plan is this is that the next week we'll go through a couple more blocks because like I want to make sure the signature block is in there there uh, and I know there's a certain star I want to make sure there's in there and then we'll start putting it together but then what's next okay we've gone pretty freaking wild with caves fabric and there's a new line that will be coming out of Edita's called Sweet 16 and it's absolutely beautiful Andover was so kind to send me a pre-pack of it and um, so I think we're gonna do baskets so here's what we're working on what I'm working on up here and uh, the baskets, uh, the good news is you don't have to buy another book. It's going to be right in that book that we're working on right now. And here's the problem. We, we do not have an unlimited amount of resources to get this fabric. The way fabric works is that basically a store orders it darn near a year in advance. And this whole COVID thing has just caught us off guard, all of us. And then so we're trying to put things together. Um, we have, I think, I don't know, I don't want to say how many because I don't want to jinx it. We do not have the access that we had of the cave. Let's just say that. But we're working with Cliff, the owner of Andover, whom I adore. And we're seeing what we can do. Some of the kits might vary a little bit, but of course it will all be Editus fabric. So Kristen is working on that. Um, what we have is on the front page we have we are not taking pre-orders not okay uh, but we're trying to get a handle on how many people might want to play along with this particular quilt just by voting okay just vote that's what we want to know so then we know how much we should shoot for again we do not uh, Andover does not have the resources or the extras that we happen to have with CAFE so We'll do the very best we can, but certainly there are a bunch of wonderful collections out there. And I'm going to give you a break in color. We're going to be working in one color family. <laughs> I think I almost killed you on that. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do the pinwheel. And I will be taking notes. So if I'm drinking my drink from my trough, if I'm looking down here, that's what I'm doing. And then I can go from there and then Teresa said if it starts uh, being jerky herky try restreaming it's not on our end and it's probably not on your end I mean we're just kind of hostage to what the situation is so let's get going on this video so I have to tell you you guys I'm I'm <laughs> I'm typing typing I'm taping all this week in one pop because we've got all the three cameras to work and so I hope you like the striped shirt <laughs> so anyways um, I so I do wash my clothes in between this is just this is Sunday afternoon and I'm feeling so happy that we got it all to work in fact I think I'm gonna go buy a lottery ticket so here is a little six inch finished four pinwheels and each pinwheel is three inches oh hey wouldn't that might look really cute in the center of this block too, right? So I don't really know how I picked the colors. I went and looked at the color wheel. I went and looked at the fabrics and no, I didn't get it from there. I don't even know. I just pulled them. They look good to me and I pulled them. Here's the problem. If you go to the pinwheel page, which is 71 and no, it's a block 71, page 83, it only comes in 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. I could do a 6 inch one, but, and I may have, I, I can't remember if I did or not, but gosh, this one is so cute with the four of them together. And it's a fussy block, you guys. So what do I do when it's time to cut my fabric? Because they don't have the measurement. So let's take a little, a little look here. On my drafting paper, I drew a three inch square, okay? You always draw the finished, and then I divided it in half, which would be uh, one and a half right there, and then I went corner to corner, and there is my pinwheel block, right? And so, what I do, the magic number, if you're doing a half square triangle, is plus seven eighths. So, X plus seven eighths. 
this is the 90 degree right here. So if this were one and a half plus seven eighths, that would be two and three eighths is what you would cut your square at. However, recently I've really gotten into the jam of squaring up. So the fact of the matter is I cut my squares one eighth up from three eighths is a half. So I would cut it at two and a half and then be willing to trim down. All right, so we're just doing one of these little pinwheels. So I have my two little two and a half inch squares, one orange, the other orange, and then the white, and I've drawn the line corner to corner with my friction pin, and I'm going to sew on each side, all right? This is a delightful little block too, completely delightful. I've done whole quilts out of pinwheels, celebrating different designers' fabric lines. So I'm gonna sew a quarter of an inch on this side. We've done this before, right? The main thing with the pinwheel, honestly, it's the pinning. It's the sewing of the triangles together where a little bit of excellence has to come forth. I'm gonna just turn it around. Yeah, John, I couldn't believe it. John, it took him about oh, 20 minutes to get all three cameras going. And I'm like, wait, okay, I'm doing all the how-to demos right now. Yay. So here we go. If you're new to this, I use an 80 weight in the bobbin. It's Quilter Select Polyester 80 weight. And on the top, I use a 60 weight it has a polyester core and long Egyptian staple cotton on the outside. And it makes your accuracy just really step up big time. So here we come over here. Let's get this out of the way. Yay. I am going to cut before I iron. Probably still will set the seams. Hey, by the way, if you have the Quilter Select rulers and it's slipping, chances are you've got it upside down. Ask me how I know, right? Just like that. There's that. I need a new blade. As soon as I go, have to go through it twice, it's time to change. Now I will go and I'll set the seams. I keep, I keep grabbing my old fashioned iron, the one that I need a wood stove to use. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I am going to press to the dark in this particular case. So I will open it from the top. There's another one. Look how I'm layering them on each other. I can be, do this because there's no exposed biases. And then I can set the seams all four at once. All right. Like that. I know some of you have gotten hold of me because you found some of these irons, you know, in your mom's stuff or whatever, and it's like, yay. Okay, so now I am going to trim it up because this should measure raw. What should it measure raw? It should measure raw two and three. No, wait, let me think. It would be uh, one and a half plus a half. Yeah, two, it should measure two inches. So I'm gonna put my little ruler on here. Where are you there? Oh, this thing's, this ruler's too. Okay, Alex, think. One, two, here we go. And I wanna keep this on the little points on the corner. You know, you don't have to trim, but I'm just telling you, this is a real persnickety, crazy little thing. And I just think trimming is the way to go. Especially when you get into smaller things like this. I'm gonna go like this. There we go. Get in there. 
in there. There we go. I don't like that that's not to the corner. There. There we go. One. I like using this one better. Sometimes these ones with these little half inch things just screw me up. How about you guys? Two. See, I want that right on that corner right there. That one didn't turn too well, but let's do two. And again, I want that to go all the way to that corner. I am a, I'm going to tell you the truth, guys. I would not be doing this sitting down in real life. I would go and stand up. This is a really, really awkward situation. Okay. Two. <clears throat> I'm excited this afternoon. You know, it was John's birthday um, this past week, and we couldn't get together with the kids. And so they're going to come over today, and we're going to get out the big. That we have a blow-up water slide. Oh my gosh! If if you're a grandma and you've got kids of the age of two to five, let me tell you, <laughs> they love it, and we love it because then they let us sit and chat like adults. You know. It's going to be like 90 here, but I'm not complaining because I love it. I even got out and got an early walk this morning. Okay, yay. So now I'm going to lay these guys out. Like this, like this, like this. And if you're doing a stack of these, look at this. You can just bring these around and bring them here and you can just piece them up, stack, piece them up. So now I've got to get this lined up to this perfectly. If this isn't perfect, the whole thing's not going to ever be perfect. So we've done a lot of pinning here and I would pin in this case. I make sure that it's going across and then I'm going to get my really nice pins. like that and then I'm going to open it up beautiful I'm going to do the next one while we're at it so I can just chain them in and when I'm lining these up I like to start at the top or where the intersection is that I want to be good I, I, I would rather sew this way than this way Right. Let's take a look. See, looks good to me. Okay. So let's sew. Now I do go over my pins very slowly, but I'm going to tell you not to. Oh, you know what? Let me see. I still have the stitches on from the demo I did on Wednesday, the tighter stitches for foundation paper piecing. And I wonder what that little stick is that was hanging out there. We will see. Let's shift it a little, but I can, we can live with that. Let's see how this turned out. Yay! Double yay! Okay, so when I go to piece up, uh, press them, I line them all up, all with the arrows pointing. Oh, look at that. That's what got caught on there. Yikes. I go like this. My point's going away from me. I'm pressing to this side. And then if I just go and line this one up the same way and press it in the same direction, 
it will work because then when I turn it around, they'll be going in opposite directions like that, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna do the three pin method that I've shared with you a trillion times. I'm going to pin in the back, right in that point. I'm gonna come right through there exactly where it's coming out. Hmm. Well, you'll see. <laughs> okay, then this is gonna go exactly in that point. And, and this is, I would not use extra long pins in this case. I'm gonna push down with my thumb. Come in a sixteenth of an inch before, a sixteenth of an inch after, and I'm going to open it up and make sure this line is going straight across. It's not. It's off, so I'm going to fix it. Because I've gone to enough work right now that I want it to come out right, right? Okay, let's look there. The back is lying to me a little bit. And that's what happens. The back will say, hey, you're in the right spot. But the right spot is what the front says, where the pin actually comes out. And I got a lot of layers here. Another little pin in right before. And then let's open it up again. Yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, trust me on that. So I'm so glad that John had the camera set up because I've talked about this. I think only once or twice I've been able to show it because of the camera situation. All right. So there I'm watching that line. Look how this pen is sticking out like acupuncture. See, I'm not pulling it out. A lot of people pull it out. I don't. And I like how my, um, see, I don't want that to get, get over it. So it's kind of stuck on there. I don't want this to get flopped back. So this is very, very awkward, you guys, with this camera right in my face. But get down there, little pen, the fabric. There we go. That pin is still hanging in there, okay? Look how I'm holding it. I'm holding it. I'm two stitches away, maybe three. One, two. I pulled it out and I'm going right into that hole. I would have left it in longer, but I'm telling you the angle I'm at is so bizarre. Let's see what happened. Sorry. Say a little prayer for me. Oh, poop. Okay. It's not good. But the good news is, is that this line is straight across. It's about equal amount of being off. So I'm going to go back and just stitch a little stitch again. This is, in, in, a, in a not perfect world, this is about as good as it gets. So I'm just gonna go back. And oh, I can even see where I missed it. I think that whole, that fabric flopping up kind of did me in. Drum roll, please. That's how we want it, just like that. Now, if you want to twirl the center, how I've done here, how I've twirled the center, I'm going to have to pick out the first line of stitching that was bad, okay? And then I'll just break the thread here, break the thread here, and the whole thing will twirl. So this is just about as sweet as it gets in my book. Anyways, again, the numbers aren't there, 
The numbers are not in the book, but I have showed you how to do it with this little piece right here. In the end, I would love for you as a seasoned quilt maker to be able to look at a block and be able to reproduce it. So let's go see if we have any questions and answers. Well, I'm the answers. <laughs> let's go see if we have any questions. Okay, you guys, I don't understand what's going on with the freezing, but um, you can certainly go watch it again on YouTube and it will be better. I apologize for that. Um, John is on it. He understands that there's an issue and he's at home and actually I'm going to wonder if he's having uh, problems. Okay, so quick questions. Um, Neela asks, can you use acorn glue? Oh yeah, that's really good stuff. You don't have to use glue stick and acorn works differently and I love those people and I love the product. Um, is there an issue with a hot iron on a cotton poly thread? No, I haven't had any problems or even a poly thread. I think it would have to be so hot you might even burn your fabric. Sharon asked what foot I'm using. It's a 97D uh, on my Bernina and what it is is one side of it is a quarter inch, the side that we're normally use for quarter inch and then the other side's a little bit wider so it helps grab the um, fabric through. Now Phyllis said this and you're right. Okay, the instructions are for four inches, okay, for a four inch finished block. There's no reason you can't make that four inch finished block and then trim it down to uh, three and a half inches so it will finish at three. And in fact, the little one that I did, I, I made them like way too big and I trimmed them down. I went, oh, what was I reading? Okay, do I use a stiletto? Yeah, I do, but if you could have seen the, um, the way the camera was like right here and I'm working around it and it just would have been an impossible situation to do in that case. Let's see, then fabric. Okay, the fabric has all shipped um, just like the other day. So hopefully you guys will get it soon. Uh, I. It was just a scene, okay? And I thank you for your patience and your understanding. And again, that's why we're giving um, Suzanne a week off. It has just been amazing. I don't think we're going to get into that with the edit to fabric this time because it's a limited quantity. And how that is going to work is when we know what we can get our hands on, we'll do it so that it launches at like nine o'clock Pacific time. So what happened originally with the cave doesn't happen here. We're learning, we're learning. Um, and so the other thing, maybe it was sent from the West and it's struggling to get past Arizona, Joanne, that's funny. So um, we're, we're doing the best we can to keep everybody happy. And I wanna keep you happy and healthy and keep sewing. And you guys are as important to me as some of you are writing to me. This means so much to me and the way you play together with the comments here, with the way you play together on the forum, it makes me very, very happy and very proud to be a part of this group. So have a great day. I'm gonna go sew because I still have Friday and Saturday. See you later.